Replacing the front crankshaft seal, which is behind the harmonic balancer and pulley there, you'll need a 24 millimeter socket to get that off. It's best removed with an impact. Uh, that way you don't have to hold the pulley while you're trying to take the nut off, otherwise it all just turns. It's best to leave the belt on. You can see it's still on down there. While you're doing that, it gives it a little bit more tension and holds the pulley in place. And once it's loose, then you can take the belt off. remove the belt you need to take the coolant overflow jug out of the way this pulls up put it out of the way then there's a 15 millimeter nut right here and that will be what you use to loosen the belt and then if you turn the wrench counterclockwise you can see how the belt loosens up there and then you can take the belt off don't have to take the belt completely off, you can just set it down there loose and then take it off the harmonic balancer on the bottom. Here's the bottom side and you can see the belt is just loose. Just comes right off, set it to the side. Go ahead and remove the bolt, it's a pretty big one. Set it aside, now you need your removal tool. This is the removal tool. I actually found it a little easier when one or two of these bolts are three and a half inches instead of four. It lets you clear the flange a little bit or the frame of the car. And this is what I'm talking about clearing right here. That's kind of heavy. And this is the back side of the harmonic balancer. There's a key right here. You need to make sure that key lines up with the key on the crankshaft when you put it back. And this is the the whole thing. Still got the tool in there. And try not to damage these tabs. These are for um, the crankshaft position sensor. Um, all of this is used. It goes by a Hall effect sensor, I believe. Don't quote me on that. Uh, so that I can, you know, figure out how fast the engine's spinning and where it's at and everything. But yeah, you just set this aside and we can get the seal out. There's the seal and everything else. Uh, here's the sensor that right here is the sensor that I was talking about that those little metal rings and tabs go past. But we're going to take out this seal right here and then put a new one in. Easiest way to get these out if they're not really stuck in there is just use a really big flathead screwdriver. Get just behind the lip, not too far that you scratch the housing and then push against the crank just a little bit. You don't want to push hard. If you have to push too hard, you got to go to plan B, which is usually to put screws uh, in the sides here, like here and over there, and then you use a vice grips to just tug it back and forth. But this one seems to be coming out like this, so I'm going to use the flathead screwdriver method. Here's the new seal, comes with this little thing to prevent it from getting damaged. I'm also going to use that to kind of install it, but I'm also going to put a little bit of RTV around the edge of it before putting it in. And I got a thin amount of RTV on the outside ready to install. New seal's in. I can't really show installing it because it's hard to get two hands and a camera in here. But you can see there's a really thin ring of RTV on the outside. Also doesn't really show on the camera with the lighting here but it's that gray ring that's just pushed around the outside. So when the new seal gets pushed in, that RTV kind of gets pushed out and fills in all the little cracks, guarantees no leaks from the outside. Just a little touch that I like to do. It's not necessary on a lot of the newer seals because they come with either like a rubber coating on the outside or some kind of uh, sealant, but I still like to do it just in case. One last thing I like to do is put some high temperature silicone grease around the inside lip of the seal. It helps install it a little easier and also gives it a better seal. Makes it last a little bit longer. How much longer? I don't know, but I do this on pretty much every gasket, seal, o-ring that I ever install and I've never had a problem.
set the harmonic balancer back up in place, make sure you line up the keys. You can kind of just wiggle it around to feel where they are. It's not that difficult. Now I'm going kind of slow on this and little at a time until I watch it bottom out. At that point, I'm going to stop, I'm going to put the belt on, and then I'll tighten this down to the correct spec, torque spec um, afterwards. I don't want to just keep hammering this on with the impact until it's tight. I just want the impact to help pull it in and sink it back up to the seat. And you can hear the sound change too when that happens. You know, it doesn't uh, doesn't sound the same. It starts to make a different pinging or tinging sound, and then you know it's uh, bottomed out, and you can put the belt back on. Another thing you can do is take the bolt back out and see that the harmonic balancer are actually seated all the way up against the crankshaft, like this is here. And then just a little bit of Loctite to uh, help hold it in place. If you don't have the tool to block the flywheel or flex plate, you can do what I did is you put the two bolts back in here that you originally had, and then you position a bar, this is just an old screwdriver here, like this, so when you tighten it down, this one will be tightening into this side, and then the other side will be pinching on this, and then the handle is down on the frame down here, you can see it had a couple drag marks from this, and then that way you stop the harmonic balancer from turning while you tighten this down. Make sure you put the belt back and the coolant jug, put those two stamped uh, nuts back on there. And then put the tire back on, lower it to the ground, and you should be done.